Hello everybody, Josh here with Just One More Fish, and today is an exciting day. We're actually going to start on the oxalotl tank that everyone's been waiting for. Now, I'm going to be using a sponge filter. I don't have to worry about where I'm going to hide filtration, heaters, and things that you would normally have in a fish tank on this build. So if you decide that you're going to jump into a build, you do need to keep that in mind. Uh, possibly using a thinner foam so that you can get your hang on the back filter over the top or whatever the case may be. With mine, there's not going to be any hidden plumbing um, or hang on the back filters. Obviously, no heater. It's an oxalotl tank. Um, I'm looking to start with more of a overhanging cliff, and then it's going to have an undercut that's more like a little cave area for an oxalotl to hide. Um, and then in our next video, we'll get into painting. So today, we're just going to get into uh, sizing the back of your tank, building a platform to actually build your background on, and if we have enough time, we'll get into the carving a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and move the camera over, do a little time-lapse video. Some of it will be slow, some will be quick, just so you guys don't have to sit here real long watching this. It is a long process. And uh, we'll see if we can help you guys make this tank. Let's get going. Okay, here's the tank we're going to be using today. It is a 20-gallon long. Now I know, don't give me a hard time for not being sparkly and clean after I just did a video on cleaning a tank. This one is pretty much ready to go. Uh, it just needs a simple wipe out and uh, we'll be good. It's got some watermarks I used it to soak some wood in. So obviously the first step is gonna be to figure out how much foam you're gonna need in this space. Always remember you can't measure on the outside and expect it to be an exact reading because it's gonna have glass on both sides. You got your top, your bottom. So you're gonna have to take the inside measurement. And in this case, I'm at 29 and a half inches. Now, 29 and a half inches is going to be a really tight fit, and that's good that it fits tight. However, you want to make sure it fits before you build an entire background on this. So, we're going to make ours 29 and a quarter, and uh, and leave it at that. It's okay to have a little bit of a gap. When measuring to the top, you don't want to go to the top of this. You obviously want to keep it underneath. So, we're looking at 11. Uh, we'll just say 11 and a half. That gives me about a quarter of an inch gap underneath um, that won't even be visible. So we're going to go ahead and start cutting the foam and getting it ready for this and uh, moving on to building this background. So now I have my back piece measured out. We're just going to use a straight edge and run it right through this hot wire and get a nice clean straight cut. Now if you don't have a hot wire it sounds crazy, but I actually suggest using a old school carpenter saw. Um, it's going to give you the straightest cut. It does make quite a mess. Um, but most other saws just don't seem to want to cut through the foam with as uh, nice an edge. Here are some of the foam blocks I'll be using. I just happen to have these two pieces laying around. Um, they're basically what is left of a large block like this. And I have about 14 of those. So this is from a previous project and we're going to use this. I don't want to bore you guys with too much of the shaving. I want to show you the detail work. But we're going to go ahead and cut this down a little bit across here. Uh, across here. Kind of build a rock shape. Do the same with that one have a crack that runs through this and uh, once I get these shaved down to a basic design I will come back to show you guys the detail work this part is real simple you're basically just sawing away stuff until you get the shape you want so uh, I'm gonna get working on that and when we come back you guys should see a something that looks a little more like a rock okay we've got a couple lines drawn out I've got the basic pieces made that I'm gonna use for the top of the aquarium before you start to carve anything, I always want to suggest that you don't take yourself too seriously on this. Um, you're carving natural formations. Nothing in nature really has straight lines or 90 degree angles. Uh, so if you mess up, just go with it. Keep going. It's probably going to turn out really cool. Uh, the main tools I use for the carving is I have my Dremel, my little pin bit. 
This thing is amazing to keep your hands from cramping up. You can just hold it and zip through stuff. And my three main bits are a sandpaper drum, this nice little uh, detail pointed piece I use, and then a grinding stone. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and start on this, get a little bit of the, the detail work going, and uh, I'm going to speed it up a little bit so you guys don't have to see the, the tedious part of just grinding away layers. When we get into more detail, I'll slow the video down and uh, let you guys see how that's done. Okay, well unfortunately I didn't hit record and I went ahead and cut these nice little lines in uh, to the rocks. Um, they're not very difficult to do and I'm actually going to just fire it up, put one more in, give you guys an idea where it's going to go. Uh, don't really need another one, but hey, you just never know what you're going to get with uh, natural formation. So we're just going to put another one right there. Now that I know it's recording. We'll zap that in. sure that you go to the bottom of the piece or all the way to the side not so much the top or the side against the tank um, but like this make sure you bring it all the way out so that it looks natural you don't have any uh, spots where it's stopped through the tank so now that these are done I'm going to go ahead and figure out the size of this filler piece it's not going to fit in perfect I don't want it to um, and it's going to be smaller to kind of give it like a wedged look so um, we're going to go ahead and start figuring that out, and um, we'll be back. All right, well, you still may see some dust flying around because I did just finish carving this out. Uh, it still has a little bit on it, but that's okay. This is where we're at right now. Looks very rough. You can still see all the lines. But this is where the trick comes in. So what you're going to need is heat. Heat does amazing things to foam. I tend to use a heat gun. You can pick one up on Amazon for 20, 30 bucks. Does a great job. Make sure you don't use it on high. You'll make a mess of your foam. What's nice is this heat will actually open up all these little cracks, spread them out so that they look more natural. It'll also round off all the rough edges 
and that's what's going to give you that natural look. Um, so we're going to go ahead and heat this thing up, see what it does. So with just a little bit of heat, you can already see the difference. It gives it a nice shine. Uh, this also hardens the styrofoam, makes it a little easier to paint. It won't chip off if the fish nibble at it. Um, so that's what one side looks like. Here's what we're at on the other side. Now we'll go ahead and finish this piece up. Just make sure you take your time, move slow. If you really bear down on it, you're going to ruin the piece. So uh, use caution with this part. Make sure you don't burn yourself. And then if you do enough, you start to see the texture of the styrofoam actually come through. Before you paint it, that looks really rough. You don't really like that. But once you start applying paint to it, that actually gives it that rough texture you're looking for. Make sure if you want something to have a nice little dent in it or dimple, you can phase it in here add texture just make sure you take your time you don't want to blow through this too fast and end up making a mess uh, of the work you've already done all right and that piece is done if you want to compare that here's the other one that's not done yet so we'll go ahead and uh, zap this one out I also did finish the middle piece it's ready to go already. I'm gonna kick it up a little since I'm used to it. Uh, you'll be able to see a lot of this just start fading away. You can see I have a little ridge right across the middle. I want to go ahead and deepen that up a little bit. So I'm going to kick it back on low. And just slowly melt it down. Add a little bit of texture to other areas. That's what we get. All right, so we finished carving what's going to be the top of the oxalotl uh, habitat, the background here. We are going to use a uh, thinner foam on the bottom, have it stick out just a little bit less in the aquarium, take up less space. Uh, I think I'm going to have to make this a three or four part video. I'm trying to keep the videos in the five to seven minute range so that nobody gets burnt out having to watch for an hour straight. Um, obviously, this is the type of uh, project that's going to take a little bit of time and effort. So don't get frustrated with it. It's really not as hard as it looks. And like I said earlier, if you make a mistake, just keep moving on. There's not a lot of straight lines in nature. If you mess something up, we'll just get another piece of foam and fill that area in. Uh, so I'm going to try to put out more than one video a week for this project. Hopefully I'll have another one out in three to four days and it'll be the bottom half of the background. And then next weekend we can work on uh, the painting of the background and possibly some of the inserts. 
So until next time, Josh with Just One More Fish, start making those tanks beautiful.